Hi everybody, welcome back. So I think what I'm going to do for the next couple videos is I'm going to do a couple of turntable videos. And the first one we're going to do is this little Hitachi model HT20S turntable. It's nothing totally special, but it is a decent little turntable. Uh, now it's got a problem right off the bat. You can see where this is the little adhesive that holds the mount to the cartridge has come loose and I really don't know what condition the stylus is. This is how it came in when I got this. Uh, and lifting up the platter, this thing is really leaking some kind of an oily, I don't know if this is the actual oil coming out, separating from the platter mat because this is getting actually kind of brittle feeling. So, obviously this was in some heat or something, I don't know what, and it even leaked onto the platter here. So, we might be able to clean up and revitalize this platter mat, maybe not. The turntable seems to turn on, we'll check it real quick, and this fell off, but maybe we can, I'll tell you what, let's pull this off, we can remove the head shell. This is kind of a different kind of head shell. And it is kind of cruddy. And the stylus kind of looks to be intact somewhat. I'm not sure, but we'll check that out later. Let's put that off to the side. And if we move this over, we can see that it does turn on. And it seems to be working. That's good news. So we're just going to give this the once over and try it out. Make sure it's going at the proper RPM and maybe see if we can find another platter mat. I don't think I have a spare one laying around but maybe we can order one inexpensively because this does not look like the correct platter mat for this turntable anyway. I would imagine it would probably be closer to be parallel with the edge of this platter. But we'll check it out. This looks to be a fairly decent cartridge and it looks like all it's going to take is just a little drop of glue like what they had in here to kind of reseat this back in there and that'll be okay. But let's remove the stylus uh, to take a look at it. I don't know if we're going to be able to get this in here, but you can see, I can't really tell 100%, but when I looked at this, it looks like this may have been an elliptical stylus, which is a decent stylus, but you can see how just totally cruddy it is. I don't know if the camera is picking this all up or not, if we're able to see it. I know I was able to kind of get it focused in, but bottom line is this thing's really cruddy and we're going to try to see if we can clean it a little bit to get a better look at it. So I'll go over that with you real quick. Okay we're going to just give this a quick second to dry off and then we're going to give a second look to this to see if it looks any better. Because I think this this stylus is worn down pretty bad. Let me look off camera myself at it. Yeah, that stylus is just about nothing left of it but a nub. So I think it's been damaged. There's a good, there's a good view of it. Can you see it? I don't know if I'm getting it in there for you or not. But I really think we're going to have to replace this one. Now I do not have any of these and I don't know that I'm going to order one. Sometimes ordering a replacement stylus on these older cartridges can cost you more than a, than a whole new cartridge with stylus. And although some of the newer cartridges are better, some of them are not as good. Uh, I think considering this turntable, we'll just put another cartridge on it. 
All right, I have a, just a generic little cartridge, magnetic cartridge out. And first of all, we'll start by looking at this stylus on this once again. You can kind of, if I can get the camera on it, you can see what we have here. <laughs> not very, not very much left of it. But now here's a brand new cartridge with a brand new stylus. And if you look at that, let's see if I can get in here. There we go. You can see, maybe you can see, there we go, just how, there, how much nicer that is. See how it's pointy? And this is what's called a conical stylus. So in other words, the diamond on this is cut in the shape of a cone. It comes to a fine tip. Now there's different types of stylus shapes, and we can get into that later on. Elliptical just kind of means that instead of being a cone shape that comes to a fine point, think if you take a cone and squish it, so it's kind of oval, and then it comes down to a point that way, that would be an elliptical uh, stylus. And those are a little bit better because they track inside the groove just a little bit better. But uh, more about that maybe later if this video isn't too long. So we're just going to remove this cartridge and replace it with that one. All right, so uh, let's go through taking this thing off and exchanging it with the new cartridge. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the stylus altogether. Get it out of the way. And I'm going to try to be gentle with this, taking these little connectors out and you can just use a little pair of needle nose pliers to do that or a pair of tweezers for that matter because this is still a decent cartridge it can be repaired and we can replace the stylus at some point in time if we can get one at a good price I have a few places where I can get some new old stock ones and that might they may have one that'll work with this so I do want to keep it in decent shape and again, this is going to need re-glued back in here, but that's no big deal either. So, we now have those out. And we're going to remove these little screws here. Just like that. Hope I'm staying in frame. I'm not looking at the screen so much as I am the actual cartridge. And there we go. And you can see how they kind of had this one squished in there. Let's kind of move that out of the way. All right, so that's out. And let's get our new cartridge. And the first thing we want to do is remove the stylus from the cartridge. Um, you generally don't want to leave that in there while you're working with this. So let me do that off camera because it's kind of hard to reach around here and do this. All right. And the first thing I'm going to do is this wire looks like it was pinched under here. I don't know if you could see it, but we're going to move that out of the way. That's part of the grounding plate for this. This is actually a pretty nice little head shell. And uh, we'll place the new one in here. Hopefully it will fit. You can see how <laughs> that's going to be a little bit tighter. And we're going to have to use these new screws because the old ones are too short. You can see how they're different length. So I'm going to put screw number one right here and just right for right now we just want to kind of loosely get this put on here actually I don't even have to have that on there at the moment okay so there it is loosely put in and I'm going to just start with them aligned this way and then we can always loosen these and kind of change our angle when we go into the alignment of the cartridge we'll get into that later but for right now 
we just need to match up the colors and usually the colors do match up you can see there's white blue green and red and just like that's those same colors are on the back of the cartridge so you can match them up although I have seen them be off uh, sometimes but most of the time the colors are correct so you don't have to worry about it so let me get these the rest of these put on you just kind of slide them on very carefully and I won't bore you with all that but you just put this one on there and it just pushes right on let me do the other ones off camera okay and that's it those are on this is mounted up and ready to go and we can pop the stylus back in and then put the little cover over it and that's going to be ready um, when we're ready to start aligning this thing well I got some good news here I guess so looking at this picture from the service manual you can see the outline of the platter and the platter mat and it's pretty clear that that is this is the original platter mat that we had on there so my concern is unfounded there <laughs> now I'm because that platter mat, mat was curved up and you can see all the oil that has leached out of it out of the rubber I have it soaking in really hot water with just like a drop of dish detergent that's it and that hot water will soften up the rubber and allow it to get back into its original shape and once we do that we're going to clean this off really well and then we can put that back together um, and you can see there's the belt and we'll remove that just like that to get it out of the way and this platter can come off like so and then we can clean it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and I'm going to move the turntable out of the way and so we can get this all cleaned up on the bench and then we'll be right back okay so we've got the all of this off of here let me put my microphone on sorry about the rustling noise and here's the belt the belt's in relatively good shape, but it does have that slime on it as well. So it's going to get a bath of hot water as well and get uh, that oil wiped off, and we'll see how it holds up. Hopefully it won't deteriorate so much. It still feels, it is rubbery and stretchy, so I don't think it's shot yet, but we're going to throw that in the hot water too. I almost wish I would have taken the camera over to the to the uh, container of hot water because as soon as I dropped that belt in there it was kind of distorted and it just kind of went like that and went into a nice circle and reformed into its shape so I think it's going to be okay that's just a little trick you can use um, now to clean this off I'm going to use a little bit of acetone on a rag and I'm going to wipe it now if you have one of these cutting mats that you use on your bench do not get acetone on it. It will eat right through this stuff in two seconds. So uh, I always just try to use this very sparingly. I put a little bit onto the rag and then I go ahead and I'll clean this off. And that'll make sure you get any residue or oil or anything and it evaporates very quickly. You can see how rapidly that cleans everything off and you can see the crud that comes right off. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down really well, and then as soon as I get it all clean, I'll be back. And after a little bit of elbow grease, you can see the crud that comes off on this, especially the part where the belt goes. You need to really clean that off well, because that uh, you don't want that to slip or anything. So that's all done. And I have the platter mat pretty much done. It's still got to dry a little bit, but you can see it fits a lot better now on here than it did before. It still has a little bit of a bend on the outside edge, but all in all, I think it'll be it'll be fine. The, the record will weigh it down and it'll be fine. If these get too distorted, they'll actually cause the record to kind of wobble a little bit, which is not a good thing. Uh, so, and really it could use a good cork platter mat or something like that or a felt one, but um, 
this will work fine for this turntable. It's it's still fine. Our belt is all cleaned up. And let's get it put back over here. And that's kind of what you want. Just so it just barely stretches over like that. And that's nice and tight now. So that belt will be great. It'll last a long time. All right, let's get this put back on. So I have the turntable back on the bench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paper towel with some alcohol. And I'm just going to run it on here and just clean off the motor. And you can see there, just clean it off a little bit before we put the belt back on. And then we can put it back together. And this is a lower end turntable, so it doesn't have a very powerful motor on it. But, uh, and you can see that just gets that crud off of there from the belt. Okay, so now we're ready to put the platter back on. This is going to eventually need cleaned as well. I mean, it turns, but it's not real smooth and it feels a little bit gummy. So we're going to have to address that as well. Maybe I'll just do that before I put this platter back on. Another quick thing I want to mention is it's okay to use alcohol to clean off these metal parts and everything. That's fine. You do not want to rub the alcohol directly on any of the rubber parts like the belts and so forth. The alcohol is actually bad for that rubber. It kind of takes all of the oils out of the rubber and causes them to dry out and possibly to fail soon. So, you know, if you're going to clean those, it's okay to use some soapy, you know, warm water or something like that, but don't don't use anything like alcohol, like especially like rub denatured alcohol or anything like that. Just a little warning. Before we flip this thing over, you want to remove this little e-clip that uh, goes down here. And this is going to be so that we can remove that spindle to be able to clean it. So I'm going to put that off to the side. And then we're going to just kind of set this down. And you can see I have this wired down just so it won't come off. And then we're going to just flip this over. Okay, as you can see, I have this thing flipped upside down. And it is sitting on its dust cover. For this particular model, it is very thin plastic, very lightweight. And I'm not afraid to do that. I do have the tone arm wired down to the ba to the holder of the tone arm, so that's not going to go anywhere. And just so this doesn't get scratched, I have this sitting on just a layer of thick bubble wrap, just to cushion it a little bit. Um, if this were a really heavy base, high-end turntable, you probably would not want to set the weight of the turn turntable plinth on the top cover because it could crack it. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. You know, you got to use a little bit of common sense. So I have all but one of the screws out right now. Let me lock the camera down. So you can see all the screws are out. I just have this one last one to take out. And uh, we'll kind of look at this. And really, even though this was a lower-end turntable in its day, it's still a lot better than a lot of the ones you that are out there right now. Uh, in that, it does have adjustable speed on it, and uh, it actually is not too terribly bad. <laughs> so there you can see it. Um, it has the grease seems to be pretty good on this. I mean. It's still very wet and pliable. So all we're really going to look at is cleaning the spindle. So we'll get that apart and I'll show it to you. So first thing we want to do is take these two screws off. And if you remember, we removed that little E-clip from the top. And you'll see why we needed to remove that clip here in a minute. So a correction, but after looking at the diagram here, you can see that this spindle does not come out from this base plate. So in order to remove it, 
this thing just slides off and you have to take this little arm which sits right like this kind of screws on the two screws one screw there and one screw there and I'll show you when I put it back together then the four screws here and then this can kind of be slid out of the way and you can lift this up off of here which is what I did now we can get in there and you can see this brass piece is actually press fit on there so you can't get it out even though you can take that little washer or that little e-clip to give you some motion but that's going to give us enough movement in there to clean this it's really kind of stiff and we want that to be clean so we're going to uh, rinse this really well with alcohol and get it cleaned out and then we're going to relubricate it with some uh, just some plain old zoom spout oil okay so after dropping some dripping some alcohol in there just you know isopropyl and kind of just working it in and out and you can see how nice and loose it is now and it spins really well now it's ready to put some more oil in it now if you look very closely this one has the little felt thing that you can absorb the oil into and we're just going to use some plain old zoom spout oil which works just fine on this there's all kinds of special turntable oil and things, but really, this, I've never had any problem with this. It always seems to work really well. And it lasts. And you just put a little drop in there, and we're going to work that in. Kind of let it work down a little bit. And uh, once that gets worked down in there, I'll put another drop or two, and I'll do that a couple of times. Until it doesn't want to take anymore and then I'll wipe off the excess you know just kind of around here and it'll be ready to go now that it's oiled up we're gonna just take this little e-clip here and we're gonna pop it right back in here if I can do this on the camera it should pop right on there it goes and it's ready to go very nice okay so now let's just put it back together the way it came apart
here you go. Taking these screws out, just two here, you can flip this over and you can see not much on here, but there are a couple of little pots, and this is for 33 and 45. So these are your speed control pots, and I'm just going to make sure those are clean before we do anything. So whenever I see these little pots like this, I like to use this deoxit D100L. The 100 means it's 100% of the deoxit lubricant or the you know the protectant. There is no cleaning agent in here as, as it you know for instance like mineral mineral spirits or whatever they put in the the D5 spray. So you very very sparingly use this. Just the tiniest little drop on each pot. And that'll ensure when we wipe that back and forth, that's going to make sure that that coats that and that'll keep it nice and corrosion free. And that's it. All right, putting this back on here, we'll show you that I don't have these wires in here. There we go. that right here and here you have these two tiny little holes and these are actually going to be the adjustments for the two speed controls and you can see even this tiny screwdriver is still not small enough to reach down inside this hole so you either have to open this up a little bit or uh, get get a skinnier screwdriver to get down in there but that just kind of shows you how tiny that is. Okay, before we put the platter on, I just want to let you know, before I put everything back together, I just the motor just sits in a cavity in here, and I took it out, and I just put a little drop of oil down alongside the shaft while it was running, and just kind of let it run down in there. And that's it, nothing else. Then I took some more alcohol on a swab and just made sure this was very clean on here and there was no oil residue or anything on it. So now we're ready to put the platter back on and it just sits on here and you can see very nice. It will spin forever there. And then we're just going to get our belt and uh, I like to just Get it started with a screwdriver and there we go and we should be able to put turn this on now and move this little arm over very nice turning very well okay we're now ready to put the head shell on and start doing our alignments so the head shell is pretty easy it just plugs on there like this and then you put this set screw in and most of them are not like this this is kind of a unique head shell design most of them uh, have a little ring little twist lock ring on them but uh, this one's fine as well and there you go that's mounted up and before we do anything what we want to do is we want to get the weight set properly on this so I'll go over that with you real quick. Before I do any cartridge alignments now, I want to make sure that the turntable is level on the bench. And to do that, you can use just a standard spirit level, kind of like this. And you can look at it from this angle, and then look at it from this angle, and you can, you know, going back and forth, you can kind of adjust, adjust it till it's level. Or if you have one of these little tools, this is something that if you do a lot of work on turntables, it's nice to have. It's just an acrylic disc with a little bubble level in the center, and it fits right over the spindle. And you can see right there, it allows you to be able to align this. Now, how are we going to get this to do this? 
Well, it's actually not that hard. All you need is a deck of cards. <laughs> and what I do is I'll take some of these cards out and I'll just place one or two cards at a time under the feet until I get it shimmed until this is perfectly centered. So let me do that and I'll, and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, that's pretty close. Just so long as it's in the little black ring there, it should be good. And I hope I have the camera at a straight enough angle. If you move the camera at all, it'll make the bubble look way off. But it is pretty much leveled now. Now we can go ahead and do our little test. Or start our alignment, I should say. For the first part of the alignment, we want to first set our weight, our tracking weight. We can always come back after that and you know and do everything else, but we got to set the tracking weight first. So what I like to do is I'll take this off first of all. And if you have a, a stylus guard, this is it's good to leave it down just in case. And I'm gonna take this all the way in and hopefully. And you can see it's still, I'm going to start bringing it out until it just kind of floats. Now see now it's going up, so just a little bit, and there it is now, just a tiny little bit more. And you can see it's floating pretty much level, and that's what you want. So that's your zero point, so that's your balance point. So now I'm going to take this and move it over here, and I'm going to take this little adjuster right here and set it to zero. See, that's just your little gauge, and that's telling you it's zero grams. Now, most of these are going to track really nice somewhere between two and two and a half grams. Uh, some of the higher end cartridges track at a lighter weight, you know, some of them can track at 0.5 to 1.5 grams. But these lower end cartridges, they're really happier somewhere in that 2 to 2.5 grams. Anywhere in there would be good. So, in order to do this now, we want to turn on our little balance. And if you notice, I have the platter mat off. And when you look at the thickness of this, it's roughly the same thickness as the platter mat. When you balance this, you want the weight of this to be balanced at the same height as, as the actual record would be. So when you take the platter mat off and you put this on there, it's roughly the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to try to zero this out, if I can remember how to do it. <laughs> There it is. And I'm going to take this over, open this up here, and I'm going to just bring this over. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this right over till it says about two grams. And then we're going to bring this over here and set it down. And that's pretty close. Look at that, 2.1 grams. So that little scale is very accurate on the back of there. And I probably didn't show you everything, did I? So let's back up. So you can see this little ring here. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're going to lift this back off. And we're going to just take it a little bit more. We're going to go maybe to about there. You can see where it says. I'm not sure if this is zooming in enough. But you can see that little weight, as you rotate it in and out, it'll move this forward and back to change the counterbalance. And this little scale here is what we're using to approximate where our weight should be, and then we're verifying it with our scale. So now that we have it set to about 2.3, 2.4 grams, I should be able to set this right here. That's good. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that right like that. That looks good. 
Okay. Very good. So the weight is now set. And we're just going to leave this like this from now on. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust the actual angle of the record, or of the cartridge. So our tracking angle is the next thing we want to do. So in order to, to align your cartridge, you're going to need what's called an alignment protractor. Now there's many different ones. And let's start with the very simplest one. And that's a straight line drawn on a piece of paper. And yes, this actually works. So you can take this and you can poke it right through here. As long as the line is perfectly lined up with this. And the idea is that no matter where you put this, and you know what, I'm going to have to trim this down. Hold on a minute. Okay. So you can just take a straight line. And the idea is, if you look straight down at the cartridge, this is not aligned properly. Let me show this to you. I hope I'm at the right angle. It's always hard to get on the camera the same thing that you have in person here. So the idea is the front edge of the cartridge, and you want to ignore this cartridge guard. I'm actually talking the stylus and the cartridge itself. You want that to be parallel to this line. And when you get the angle perfect, okay, which is affected by the, the position front to back of this and the angle of the cartridge, if you get it perfect, when you line it up here and then you move it forward like this and you get into here, it should still be straight. That's how that should work. And uh, if you get it right, it'll track. But if you don't get it right, it will not track. So we can see where this is not on right now. So we are definitely going to have to move this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to loosen these screws and just kind of move this a little bit. It's hard to do when you're, you know, in the camera and everything. I want to be careful with this so I don't damage anything. Okay, so if you look at it right now, it's perfectly lined up with this. So let's very carefully and gently lift the, the arm up. And what we want to do, is, and you notice how I had to angle this. That's normal. Now we want to move this down here a little bit. And we want to put it back down on there. And you can see it's almost perfectly lined up. Now it's kind of a little bit hard to see from here, but let me move, see if you can see it. There we go. <laughs> you were seeing the top of the, car, the uh, head shell. So see it there? It's perfect. Now, notice what I had to do. I had to do two things. I'm going to lift this up here so it's not sitting down. I actually had to do two things here. The first thing I had to do was I had to angle the cartridge like this. But the other thing you have to do is I had to move the overall cartridge on the slots back a little bit. See, this direction. If this were at this same angle but moved just a little bit forward, what would happen is it would line up with the line at one end, but it would not line up with the line at the other end. And it's there, therefore it's not tracking properly. So the idea is, if we don't have that, if let's say this was off angle, what's going to happen is that stylus, as it's tracking in that groove, is actually going to start moving to one side of the groove or the other. So it's going to affect your stereo separation. Now on a really cheap low-end turntable, you don't necessarily, you won't notice it as much. But as you get to a higher-end turntables, higher-end cartridges, that starts to become a factor. The other reason that the, the turntable needs to be level. If it's not level, that, that little tiny bit of weight is actually going to shift that stylus a little bit in the groove, and it's not going to track dead center of the groove. So essentially that's it. The cartridge is lined up. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. The line I'm showing you is a very easy way to do it. You can take a 
sharpie pen <laughs> and a sheet of paper and draw a line on it and that will work you can also get these elaborate ones for different types of alignments depending on the type of cartridge and all these things and you can print these out there's even programs that you can design very custom angles like this and they all essentially align the cartridge but we can get more into that later but on these low end turntables that straight line will be just fine you can also use you know a commercial protractor like this which is a mirror and it has a little grid network and it makes it a lot easier because you can actually put the stylus tip right in these little circles here A and B and you can go back and forth and adjust them and uh, it's the same thing as when you use the line really there's no difference but this just makes it a little easier to visualize you'll find out if you just use the paper with the line on it you're gonna have to kinda stoop down and really get you know look at it very carefully but uh, that's pretty much it now the other thing that you can get into and this is something we're not going to do on this turntable you can get into rake angles and all those kinds of things what I mean by that is as the needle or the stylus is tracking on the record you know when you're looking at it from you know from the side view the stylus whether it's tracking at a little bit of an angle or straight or back back rake all of that affects the sound as well especially with higher again higher end cartridges and higher end turntables and, and that's why some turntables some of the higher end ones the whole arm assembly can be raised up and down to change that angle you know that it changes the angle of the arm which changes the angle of the stylus in the groove but uh, you don't really need that on this this will work just fine now last but not least we're tracking at about 2.3 grams, which is a little bit heavy, but for these turn for these cartridges is, is good. And in order to adjust, last but not least, we want to adjust our anti-skating. What the anti-skating is is because of the for the rotational forces on the record. As this thing's turning, this thing's going to want to tend to either pull in or out. It's going to want to skate and this is just a little spring tension that it's going to put little back tension on this to counteract that skating effect and essentially whatever tracking force you set your stylus to track at you set your anti-skating to that same setting and it should be very very close now if you notice that the record is skipping or that it's not tracking properly um, you can move that a little bit. The other thing is if you have a clear piece of acrylic, um, there, are the, there are test records that have no groove on them. You can actually run the stylus on that and technically with a completely smooth surface like a piece of smooth glass or plexiglass, that, that stylus should just stay in one place even with the record rotating. It should not want to skate in and uh, you can make the fine adjustment to it with that if you have one of those. Again, we're not going to do that on this. This is going to be close enough. Okay, the last step is we want to just measure our speed. We want to make sure that the turntable is rotating at the correct speed. We want it to be rotating at 33 and a third RPM on the for the LP setting and then for 45s we want it to be rotating at 45 RPMs and if you remember on the bottom there was those two access holes on that circuit board and those two little potentiometers that we cleaned up and those are what we're going to use to adjust it you can tell how that's going to be a little bit of a pain on this thing simply because there is nowhere <laughs> there you have to access them from the bottom um, so this is a lot of these turn cheaper turntables like this have that ha even have an adjustment at all have to be adjusted from the bottom and the problem with that is obviously you either have to lift this up and like put it on a stand so you have enough room to get your screwdriver under there and adjust it or you have to adjust it a little bit put it back down test it again adjust it a little bit it's a little bit of a pain in the butt so I like to prop them up a little bit but we may not have to 
again, this is called a, a stroboscope disc. And this is just a piece of paper. This is that you can print on your printer. You can download these patterns just like you can for, for the protractors, you know, like these protractors I showed you. You can actually download the pattern for these and print them out. They're just like a PDF file. And you just print them on your printer, cut them out, you know, cut the circle out. You don't have to be that neat. And you put this over like this. And if we zoom in, 33 and a third is the this wide part right here. So if we're right on with our, and I can show you that here, it shows you. If you're perfectly on, this, these lines will look like they're sitting still, while these ones are kind of moving in opposite directions. So this is plus 2% over 33 and a third. This is plus 4%, and this is minus 2 and minus 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on, and we're going to zoom in a little bit, and hopefully the camera will be able to pick up the effect. I do have a incandescent light shining on there that's running on mains power. That usually helps a little bit with the strobe, strobe effect. So let's turn on the turntable. And you can see right now that they're all kind of moving a little bit. But this one looks like it's the most still one. So if we go back and look at this again, that means that, that you're running about 4% fast on your speed. Now, that might possibly be okay that it's running a little bit fast because some of these lower end turntables, because they have such a small, this just uses a small DC, 12 volt DC motor and a little permanent magnet motor. It has very low torque. In other words, if I turn this on like this and I get it moving, it doesn't take much for me to slow this thing down. So if I simulate putting, a, putting the needle down, <laughs> you can see how it falls right into place there. If I let it go, you can see how it, it moves. So see there? So, and I'm barely touching it. So chances are this thing is running at the correct speed. Um, that's kind of a, something you got to look out for. You, you know, you, you adjust the speed on these lower end turntables uh, with just, with no record and no, and no, without having the cartridge, you know, and the stylus down on the record. And then <laughs> when you put the stylus on, all of a sudden it's playing slow. That's why. It's because of that. Now, higher end turntables have much higher torque motors that don't tend to, to drift very much unless you put a lot of force on them. And you can set them like that. So once again, just something to be aware of. I'm going to leave this one alone because I think it's pretty close. And I think once the, the record is sitting there and once you have the stylus on the groove, it's going to be running at almost the correct speed. So, of course, the last two clips that I did got messed up and didn't record. So, I had to come down here just as I was finishing editing the video and set everything back up. So, um, I originally did not have an amplifier connected, but since we just did this Lafayette and it was fresh, well, I stuck it down here and just plugged this in. Now what I have is a test record, and what I'm going to just play is a couple of 300 hertz sine waves that are 180 degrees out of phase, which you'll be able to see on the oscilloscope here. I mean, you can listen to it, I'll turn it up, but it's just going to sound like a tone is all it's going to sound like. But to give you an idea of what a record looks like when it's playing, especially when it's not the high end, <laughs> you know, with, uh, you know, with a weight on the top and platter weight and all these other things, um, and not having a solid base under it or anything like that, this is definitely not the best situation that we're going to play a record under. But we'll drop the needle here. And you can see, here it comes. 
and you can hear it. It's just an out of phase tone, you know, for between right and left. And you can see how those sine waves are kind of vibrating a little bit. That's actually the rumble of the record that you're that you're seeing. That's exactly what that is. And other things you can see and see if I tap the so watch here. <laughs> if I tap this, you can see what it does. I'm going like this. So it does make a difference. So anyway, that's it. It is playing and uh, everything seems to be working okay from what I would expect. Uh, of course, a cartridge like this and everything isn't going to be able to play a, for instance, a square wave. If you go to the very beginning here, I'll show you what a square wave looks like on this. <laughs> um, and remember, the tone controls of the amplifier affect it and so forth. Also, this is not the ideal amplifier to be playing something like this. But I just want to kind of show you some of the shortcomings of... Uh, vinyl. Although there are record players that can produce this, they're very expensive. Um, okay, hold on. Ready for... there it is! <laughs> square wave! <laughs> that is what a square wave looks like on this thing. Um, obviously an analog mechanical arm a cartridge is not going to be able to reproduce a square wave. Now, I'm sure if you had, you know, a high enough end cartridge and so forth, you could get a lot closer than this. But um, this is what you're going to get. So, uh, just thought that would be interesting to kind of show you. And strangely enough, even though there are limitations as to what a turntable can do as far as reproducing music and as you get like i said as you get higher up in the in the gear um, it, the sound gets better and better and more and more accurate but on these lower end turntables this is what to expect but even in spite of all that when you play an actual song on these turntables can sound very musical and uh, again it's a huge topic of discussion among a lot of people, but sometimes it's a <laughs> topic of argument. I know I don't argue over such things because, you know what, I like I like it all. I like the nostalgia, like I said, of the turntable sound. And if you've ever heard a properly set up turntable, a really high-end one that you and I probably could never afford, um, maybe some of you can, it is really truly an amazing sound. But unfortunately, by the time you get to that level, you have to put an awful lot of money and an awful lot of time in setup. Um, much more than if you just popped a CD into your CD player. Um, which, again, source of, source of discussion, you know. But that's pretty much how to set one of these up, one of these lower range turntables. Uh, if you ever get a used one and, and want to restore it or something like that. That's pretty pretty much the whole setup. So I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed doing it. Killed some time anyway. And as always, I'm going to wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health. And uh, maybe we'll do another turntable video. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments section what you think. Uh, if, there, if you're interested in analog vinyl like this, I have a, uh, some really nice turntables. I have a really nice Rotel that needs done. I have a really nice Pioneer uh, quartz locked with the little meter on it and everything, direct drive. And even have a nice quadraphonic uh, Shibata needle <laughs> cartridge, new old stock, that we could set up on it. I don't know. But uh, let me know what you think, and maybe I'll do another video on turntables. Uh, until then, take care, and we'll see you really soon, I hope. Take care. Bye-bye.